Hi, I'm Ariel. You're watching She Wants the Diction, and today I'm going to be showing you guys my antique and vintage book collection. Now, I promised this in a previous video, but I actually realized while going through all of my old books that I had a lot more books than I realized, and so I've decided to kind of like separate this out by, I guess, decade. So this video is just going to be my books from the 1910s to about the 1950s, um, because a lot of these books are so old that they don't even have like actual publication dates printed in them. So I just kind of had to like Google them and try to figure out where people estimate, you know, what time period people estimate these books are from. So I don't have a ton of books from like the early 1900s. So that's why I decided to kind of lump them all together. For some reason, I have a huge amount of books from the 60s and maybe I will make a separate video on that. But for now, this is just going to be my books from that are basically the oldest and earliest books that I have in my collection. Let's just go ahead and get started. I'm going to try to do these kind of in chronological order, if you will. The first book is The Lake English Classics, Types of the Short Story, edited by Benjamin A. Hadrick and published in 1913. And as you can see, this one's in kind of rough condition, but I think that's kind of to be expected uh, from a book that's over 100 years old, you know? So I think this is pretty much just a like a textbook or would have been like a school book back in the day, essentially teaching, you know, students different types of the short story, which I thought was really cool because I'm a nerd <laughs> and you can see the the publication date there. Um, yeah, the water damage, there's a lot of water damage like at the top of the pages and but like the binding is all intact, like there's no loose pages in this book or anything like that. So I think in that respect, it's in pretty good condition. You might, guys might have actually seen this book before because I think um, when I did the first sentence challenge that uh, this was one of the books that Adam dug out and uh, we we're kind of discussing Rip Van Winkle. Okay, the next book is The Golden Treasury, which is edited by Francis Turner Palgrave and was published 1935. This one is in really, really good condition, like mint condition pretty much. Um, I love the gold accents on it. And this, this book is honestly untouched. You can see in the corner there, uh, the price is still written on it, actually. I should probably go in with an eraser and get rid of that. But yeah, I, I have a lot of books like that where I haven't erased the price. Um, this book is kind of divided into like different books. Um, and it's interesting because it's like all sort of like classic poetry. Like I think I saw a couple poems by Shakespeare in here, but it's all really like traditional poetry um, around like really traditional subjects like love, nature, you know, sort of timeless stuff like that. Um, I do like the the way this book is laid out with like the the drop caps are really pretty. And so yeah, this, this is a really good find for how old it is. I can't believe, you know, it just looks like whoever owned it never really read it or touched it or picked it up or anything. So um, this was a, a cool find for sure. Like as you can see, I only paid $1.95 for it. So yeah. That's, that's really dope. The next book is The Confessions of an English Opium Eater by Thomas De Quincey. And this was published around 1935, I believe. Um, as you can see, the outside is kind of dirty. I should probably clean that, even though I'm not really sure how you would clean books like this. I don't know if you can use regular cleaner or what. But anyways, this book is interesting because it's like the original drug memoir. And as you guys know, I have um, quite an interest in, you know, like, drug-related, <laughs> this sounds so terrible, but, like, just drug-related things, memoirs, stories, whatever, like, an interest in consciousness altering, so this is, like, the original story, and I believe, just from, based on reading the first couple of pages, that he got addicted to opium, you know, the way that a lot of people, you know, get addicted to drugs in, like, a modern context, which is, you know, they're using it for pain relief, and then they sort of just, like, start becoming dependent on it and this book is also really cool because there are a lot of really detailed illustrations like some of the the lines in these illustrations are like so dense like I don't even think this uh camera view is really doing it justice but yeah there's some really really detailed illustrations in here uh which is really cool I believe I just randomly picked this up I saw the title and started cracking up and then was looking through it and I'm like, wow, this is, this is the real deal. Like, why have I never heard of this or seen anything about this? So or initially I just bought it cause I thought it was funny, but, um, now I'm really like curious to read it. So, okay. The next two books are kind of a set. It's Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights by Charlotte and Emily Bronte. And I believe these are from around 1938. I couldn't place an ex exact date on them, but that's the estimate. 
And since they're both a set, I'm only going to show you one, but this is what it looks like on the inside. Um, the pages on the outside do have like some spotting. I'm not sure if it's if it's water damage or what exactly it is. I did attempt to read this once, but I kind of uh, not really gave up on it. Just kind of set it aside. I'm sure I'll go back to it eventually and finish it out since it is a classic. And but yeah, this this is what it looks like. They're in pretty good condition on the inside. The next book is Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert, and please forgive me if I'm not pronouncing that right. <laughs> this one is from 1949. I like the uh, the bright red in pages this one has and also seems to be styled really similarly to the last two, almost as if they were like maybe a set or a series or maybe had the same publisher. Not exactly sure, but they just look really similar, similarly designed to me. This one actually does have a couple illustrations in the front. Not necessarily great illustrations, but Still, at least they try to put a little something extra in there. I have not read this one either. This is this is when I was in my phase of just buying things because I recognized the title or they were classics and things like that, which I don't really do anymore or I try to avoid. Okay, and the next is this Webster's Vest Pocket Dictionary, the self-pronouncing deluxe edition from somewhere in the 1940s. I absolutely love this. It has like a rather red leather imitation sort of cover and I keep this on my nightstand. And it is awesome. I honestly use this more than I ever use a regular dictionary or a dictionary on my phone. And the reason this is great is because it has so many archaic words in it. So most of the things, I feel like most of the words I don't know are like older words or like words I don't encounter a whole lot. And 99% of the time, whatever word I'm looking for, it can be found in this. And I just love how cute and tiny it is. Like, I, I don't really know what a vest pocket is. Like, I assume, <laughs> I guess we don't really wear vests anymore, but I assume you would have just like slipped it into your your shirt pocket or whatever, which I think is really cool. And I'm just one of those people that thinks small things are super fucking adorable anyway. So yeah, I fucking love this thing. It's like one of my best finds ever. And here's just a size comparison. It That's it next to a regular size book. Next book we have is Animal Farm by George Orwell. <laughs> Pretty much everyone knows what this is, but my copy is from 1946. And this is the copy both, both me and Adam actually read, read Animal Farm out of this, but it's got someone's name on the inside. And you have to be really careful with it when you're reading it because uh, the binding at the bottom is about ready to split, which is not surprising. But um, yeah, you just have to be really careful with it when you're reading it. I don't really have a whole lot to say about this one. I feel like I, I just randomly found it. Like I come across classics all the time, but if I can find like a vintage paperback with some kind of like cool or weird or just like old illustration on it, I love to just go ahead and like buy those. And this one especially I, like, actually wanted to read. Okay, and then we've got Reading for Pleasure, which is edited by Bennett Cerf and dates from around 1957. On the spine, we've got a little illustration of him with his pipe. Um, there's also a picture of him holding his pipe on the back, so this guy really fucking loved his tobacco <laughs> and his pipe, let me tell you. Um, but this book is cool because it's, like, an anthology. Um, Bennett Cerf, I guess, was one half of the publishing house Random House, which is... I was, I did some research on the book actually, and um, Random House really is named that because they would pick random things to publish. So this is actually a really cool find. It's a, it's a first edition. This is something Adam bought for me, but um, it's a first edition and it's kind of literally what the title sounds like is just things that this editor sort of remembered um, feeling a lot of pleasure when he was reading and just really, really liking and enjoying. So it's really cool. Um, it's sort of organized by like sections of, you know, different types. I sort of looked at the first section and it's called companion pieces so it's sort of he picks different selections that he thinks kind of go together so this seems like it's gonna be a really good cool anthology because we all know that I fucking love randomness and just I'm feel like I'm pretty eclectic in my reading uh so one thing that's cool about this is I think I'm trying to find it right now but uh in this anthology there's Charlotte's Web or at least part of it which I thought was cool there's like a children's section so you guys will see it on screen if I can find it there it is <laughs> But yeah, so there's Charlotte's Web in here. I noticed the first story is something by Rachel, Rachel Carson, who's famous for writing um, the book, the environmental book, Silent Spring. So that's cool. I, I feel like there's going to be a lot of just like interesting, intriguing things in here. And I'm just super excited. Like I haven't actually dug into it, but this was like a really good find slash buy. Oh, there he is with his pipe. <laughs> Okay, so that is all of my vintage and antique books, you know, spanning from the 1910s to the 1950s. 
hopefully you guys enjoyed and I will continue these videos if there is enough interest. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace.